In this section, we're going to be looking at reasoning in algebra and geometry. So we're going to start by looking at some key concepts, properties of equality. So let A, B, and C be any real numbers. The first property is the addition property. If A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. Now the subtraction property, if A equals B, then A minus C equals B minus C. Multiplication property, if A equals B, then A times C equals B times C. Division property, if A equals B and C does not equal 0, then A divided by C equals B divided by C. Reflexive property, A equals A. Symmetric property, if A equals B, then B equals A. Transitive property, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Substitution property, if A equals B, then B can replace A in any expression. Keep in mind these properties because you're going to need to memorize them and understand them well in order to write proofs. Now we're going to look at another key concept. Here we have the distributive property. So let's look at an example of this. Use multiplication to distribute A to each term of the sum or difference within the parentheses. So we have A parentheses B plus C. And we want to use the distributive property. So we're going to multiply A times both terms inside the parentheses. So A times B give us AB plus A times C, which is AC. And that's the distributive property. Now we're going to look at another key concept, properties of congruence. Here we have the reflexive property. Line A is congruent to line AB. And then we have the symmetric property. If A, if line A is congruent to line CD, then line CD is congruent to line AB. In the symmetric property, they were just flipped. Transitive property. If line A, AB is congruent to line CD, and line CD is congruent to line EF, then line AB is congruent to line EF. Now we're going to look at an example of using properties of equality and congruence. So in the first example, Angle O is congruent to angle W, and angle W is congruent to angle L. So angle O is congruent to angle L. And we can tell this is true based on the transitive property of congruence. Now we're going to look at another example. Here we have the measure of angle E equals the measure of angle T. So the measure of angle T equals the measure of angle E. This is based off of the symmetric property of equality. Now we're going to look at something called a proof. A proof is a convincing argument that uses deductive reasoning. A proof logically shows why a conjecture is true. And what we're going to look at are two column proofs. So we're going to look at an example of this. We're given the information measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 3. And they want us to prove that measure of angle AEC equals measure of angle DEB and we also have a diagram to look at so in order to write a two column proof go ahead and make two columns one is going to be our statements column and the other is going to be our reasons so we know what we've been given and we know what we need to prove so we're going to start by writing what we've been given so in the statements column write measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 3 and the reason is because it's given now measure of angle 2 equals measure of angle 2 and the reason for this is the reflexive property of equality you can go ahead and look back on the properties in order to confirm this now statement number 3 measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 equals measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 2 and we know this is true because measure of angle 1 and measure of angle 3 are equal and the reason for this is the addition property of equality now statement 4 measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 equals measure of angle AEC measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 2 equals measure of angle DEB and we can look at the diagram and the information in combination in order to confirm this. And the reason for this is the angle addition postulate.
Now, statement number five would be measure of angle AEC equals measure of angle DEB, which is what we had to prove from, from this problem. And the reason for this is substitution. So as you can see, this is how you write a two-column proof. On one side, you're actually solving the problem, and every step that you solve, you want to write a reason with it, which has to be one of your properties or postulates. And it's, it really helps to get a good understanding of all your postulates and properties before you try to write proofs.